G'day there guys, Marky here, back again with another episode of r slash just no HOA. Now with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the bloody good content. Posted by user LWordNC, titled, Three Member NC HOA Board President Levying False Special Assessments to Put Lean Slash Foreclosure. It's okay, I didn't understand either. Long story short, our North Carolina HOA Retirement Community Board members quit over the past year due to tyrant slash bully HOA president who is an investor slash landlord owner. There are three members total left, levying thousands of dollars in special assessments for false damage, giving owners six months to pay, charging interest slash late fees slash legal fees, then placing liens to foreclosure. We just found our HOA president acquired all his condos, purchasing HOA liens, foreclosing, evicting owners, and getting title from their banks on mortgages by co-signing rents to their banks. These mortgages have very small amounts left to pay off. His term has expired, but he has postponed our annual meeting to vote a new board due to COVID-19. We are getting a petition together to demand annual votes, but he is friends with and controls property management company, and uses their attorney as our HOA board attorney. If we get the petition signed, how do we have the annual votes if they are controlling and stalling everything, and levying more fee assessments? How do we prove he is voted off the board and get our new HOA board in? Help. You need a lawyer. What you are suggesting is literally criminal. If any of this is remotely true, the president needs to go down for fraud. But you also need a lawyer to protect yourself financially in the short term. Thank you. That's what I thought. But I didn't want to alarm other homeowners if my intuition was incorrect after confirming the information in my post. I've also been poring over the bylaws and cc and Rs, trying to figure out what we can do and how we can do it. I think something is also being done financially with our association funds that he is trying to hide after speaking with board members that quit. Most homeowners, 120 condos total here, have been here 15 to 20 years and are scared. Many are homebound with disabilities due to age and don't even have email. Bylaws don't mean squat if he's committing a crime. Lawyer. The management company likely has connections with most association lawyers in the area, when reaching out, try to find someone with no connections. Good luck. Our president just had a go-to meeting, virtual meeting yesterday. Homeowners were notified and 38 of us were able to join. It was a clusterfuck. He and the property management owner, who stated that he was a 26-year builder, tried to justify their inappropriate actions, and all our homeowners were extremely upset, especially when we found out these two expired board members that just appointed another member, a friend, so they now have a quorum of three and can continue enforcing actions and making decisions. Our association just got $2 million insurance payout for fire damage. We feel the president and property management are doing something with this money. They are fighting too hard to not let us have our annual meeting and board votes. Can us homeowners as a group file a class action to cease and desist since they are all breaching their fiduciary duties? I can't stress this enough, you need an actual lawyer. I am not one, and just from what I read here, your state laws around HOAs are very different from where I am. You can't just appoint board members here. I do think your instincts are probably correct, and some large swindle is going on. Get a lawyer, and get in touch with the local prosecutor. This is very serious criminal activity. I would also reach out to the owners that were forced out. They may wish to press charges and or sue in order to maybe recoup their losses. At the very least, they may have some insights. I will. I've been copying the evidence we found in the Register of Deeds. Notices of foreclosure, deed of trust changes, assignments of rents, etc. I never realized people did this, but I think he just thought we were all either old or stupid, so we would never figure it out. He seems to get himself voted on to limited income HOA boards that he buys like this, then scares board members about needing false major repairs to charge special assessments without a 51% homeowner vote, i.e. balconies with structural issues will collapse at any minute, shows picks to board, but not even of our property, then fake repairs never done. Several of us feels he uses his HOA board positions like insider trading, and another reason why he's holding this annual board election vote hostage. 
He is catalyst initiating these fake special assessments that leads to the liens slash foreclosures with access to private information and access to direct knowledge of the timeline to purchase the ones with little and no payoff he wants under one of his many LLCs at the courthouse foreclosure auction. Very interesting. Property managers in North Carolina have to operate under a real estate license. If they refuse to acknowledge a property petitioned by the owners, and from the sounds of it, have been complicit in legally questionable actions by the board president, then file a complaint with the North Carolina Real Estate Commission. At the very least, reach out to find out how to address your concerns. Here in Florida, property managers must have a specific license as a community association manager. Property managers take the threat of loss of those licenses very seriously. The other option is to retain an attorney and possibly bring it to the Attorney General's office. If you are being foreclosed on, you would not be able to stop the foreclosure even if the special assessment was based on false information and the HOA as a whole needs to get ahead of this. If the HOA board and members voted and passed a special assessment according to the rules, it is a valid special assessment even if they lied about what the money is for or changed their mind later. In general, an HOA board is not required to follow a budget strictly, and it is not usually a violation of a fiduciary duty to embellish on what repairs are needed. It is not usually illegal to purchase liens and foreclosures on homes, even if you are a board member, provided the HOA is actually paid for this. The process for recalling the board will vary depending on your governing documents and local law, it would be best to get a consult with a real estate attorney that deals with HOA law who can go over your specific situation. The general process is to put out notice that a public meeting will be held to replace the board. Possibly, you will need to get 5% of the owners to sign this to hold the meeting, and you need to give enough notice ahead of time. Then at the meeting, you need to have enough members to have quorum present, or you need proxies. In many cases, you need 51%, sometimes a different number usually less for a very large HOA. Then vote in the new board, change the rules around special assessments, or otherwise deal with the immediate problem. You also want to update bank accounts and vendors with the new board members info, so the previous board members do not try to embezzle money or cause any issues. The proof is all of the members present at the meeting. Worst case, you need to establish new bank accounts going forward and to sue the old management company if they fail to turn everything over but it is very likely that they would not cause any problems. They could lose their real estate licenses if they violate the law, and in an extreme case, they could be personally liable for the related costs of a lawsuit or even face criminal charges. Expect the old board members to complain, but there isn't much they can do. And in the spirit of changing HOAs over, Illegal Life Pro Tip. Gather your friends and run for positions in your neighborhood HOA. It's easy to get elected and easy to get away with corruption. Homeowners associations have little oversight and a lot of power over people's lives. Unfortunately, they are run by a board of people on staggered terms. Members are not all elected at the same time. This prevents one group from taking control and doing something stupid. You can get around this democracy bullcrap by organizing all your friends in the neighborhood to run for the HOA board in both elections. If you're not a loser, you should have enough friends to get majority control. Each one of your friends needs to apply to run for a board position. Next, print out flyers promising to build a pool if your band of invalids is elected. If your neighborhood already has a pool, you could promise to build a tennis court, basketball court, playground, sex dungeon, or some of the crap that people would want. Go around knocking on each door. Try and personally persuade each resident that a new pool would be the greatest thing ever. You are running against a bunch of old people who don't have the energy to put as much effort into their campaigns. Also, there is a lot of apathy when it comes to the HOA board elections, so you only need a few votes to win. Make sure to include a detailed guide on how they can vote, since most residents have never voted in an HOA election. Once in power, try and convince the board to build the pool. They will likely say it is unaffordable, impractical, and reckless to YOLO most of the budget on a pool. This is good! When the other lot of board members are running for re-election, make sure to hammer home that those pieces of crap are preventing you from building that awesome pool that everyone wants. Knock on doors and spread the propaganda. 
This should be enough to get the rest of your buddies elected onto the board. Now that you have taken over the HOA, it's time for the fun to begin. Double the HOA fees under the guise that it is a temporary expense in order to fund the pool everyone wants. The residents can't do anything since moving is a pain in the ass. Next, contact the company in charge of landscaping for the whole community. Tell them they're going to need to start paying a bribe if they want to keep landscaping in your neighborhood. They will comply since landscaping your neighborhood is very profitable for them. You and your fellow board members now need to go around like hawks searching for rule breakers. HOA rules are very strict. It should be easy to find tons of violations. Find all of the rule breaking residents. If you have trouble finding violators, enact new stricter rules that people will inevitably break. The HOA should be raking in bank. HOAs are reputable organizations that banks trust to lend money to. Hire an engineer to plan out the most expensive cool pool. Present the schematics to a bank. If you want a loan for the full amount with a little money down, the bank will give you a crappy interest rate that'll bankrupt the HOA down the road. Get the biggest loan you can. Next, open as many business credit cards as you can in the HOA's name. Have a friend add the cards to a PayPal account. Have him send the money to your personal PayPal account till all the cards are maxed out. HOA likely has a secretary or some monkey on the payroll. Fire that guy. Hire yourself to that position, make the salary so high that the entire HOA budget, including the loan money, goes to paying you. Tell your friends that you will split the stolen funds with them. Explain to them that it's better to have one person in control of the money, since the police will only penalize that person rather than the whole group if caught. Your HOA board is going to become very unpopular. Luckily, board terms can range anywhere from half a year to three years. The residents can't do crap. Raise them HOA fees again if you want, it doesn't matter. Also, never build the pool. That's a waste of money. As your term nears its end, it'll be time to flee. Drain your bank account with all the HOA money in it, use the illicit funds to buy as many diamonds as you can, this will make your wealth portable and easy to hide. Fly to any country without extradition treaties with the US. You could live in Russia with Edward Snowden for example. Enjoy being rich as hell. I understand a lot of neighborhoods don't have an HOA. Next time you move, move to a neighborhood with an HOA to get the ball rolling. I know this method will screw over many working class individuals. You can avoid this by only doing the bank and credit card scam. Most of your money was going to come from this anyway. However, if you want to maximize your gains, you've got to scam the residents too. Fun fact, many HOAs and condo boards do not require you to live in the neighborhood or condo building in order to be a board member. Tio had an issue with a couple people infiltrating multiple condo boards and them embezzling all the funds slash giving high price contracts to themselves and friends. So you don't need to move there to get on the board. Is it possible to be a member of multiple HOA boards at once? I'll do this with 20 HOAs so I can buy a yacht. Ha, huh, I think these guys were on multiple boards at a time, but I don't recall all the details. I'd guess it depends on each HOA slash condo's bylaws and whatnot. Find ones that don't have any related stipulations, and you're golden. Congratulations on your amazing HOA riches. Now that you have neighbor enemies and a lot of money, it's not that far a stretch to go on the deep web and hire a hitman or two to take out anybody who questions you, smiley face. When you get bored, just start burning random houses down. You can get away with it. You're the head of the HOA. You decide what happens to people's houses. Just murder all the cats and dogs in the neighborhood. No pets allowed. Obviously, I don't condone this message. This is a uh, this is definitely satire. Move on to s okay. The wives of married couples become your wives. The head of the HOA is the only one allowed to be married. Also, polygamy is only legal when you do it. Hire a construction company to dig big holes in the middle of the street. When residents crash their car into them, tell them it's a big neighborhood-wide obstacle course. Hide in the woods near your neighborhood and rob people's houses when they go to sleep. Money, goods, whatever. As the head of the HOA, you're entitled to all of it. When families go on vacation, have their house towed away and dumped in a lake or river. When the family complains, tell them they need to fill out a temporary relocation pass in order to take an extended leave, as per HOA rules. Sounds like you're on my HOA board. 
I really hated how they had meetings at 6pm, when while I was still in work traffic. The last time I attended in person, I told them I did not care for the trash can policy. We all make trash, and I don't want my trash can in my garage, stinky, or garden, where my food grows. The best place for my was on my front stoop, as I don't use my front yard. It is off limits due to the HOA. I was threatened by an old man who said he would steal my trash cans if he saw them out. I simply wanted to change the rule, but I was outnumbered by old, nosy people. They did a Zoom meeting due to the pandemic, and I finally got to go to one again. They were not going to meet quorum, but I showed up early, and they also had to call a board member to show up. One of them was wanting to go into the rainy day fund to plant flowers in the middle of a pandemic. That, that, that was the priority. I told them that was not a smart idea, since if people have to choose between food or HOA dues, they should choose food. Therefore, funding for flowers did not make any sense. I also agreed with another person there should be a supportive, proactive message to let people know to make arrangements with Jews if they are laid off. The HOA decided people already knew this, and this did not need to be spoken about again. They figured they are doing you a favor to spruce up the neighborhood flowers when you are trying to sell your family home due to not having any money due to pandemic layoffs. I am vegan, but I know there have been egg shortages. I asked why our HOA rules were violating Texas law. Texas law says that it is illegal for an HOA or city to ban up to six chickens for person food production. The HOA said they can't change the rule because they can't meet quorum. I also asked why HOA meeting invitations were in a mysterious email that says, read the attachment, rather than with an email calendar invite. They said they would change that, but did not. I missed the next meeting, as the PDF does not render on my mobile device. I ran and won a seat. Not to be corrupt, but I have approved solar panels, garage add-ons, living yards, and started a social distance get-together at the end of your driveway to get people together. Blah! <laughs> Going green. Does the board have the power to take out loans for neighborhood projects? Particularly extravagant swimming pools that cost well over $1 million to build? Didn't you hear? Solar panels! Solar panels! Posted by user, Dog Goes Boof. Titled, HOA Says No Reptiles Allowed. I really don't understand how you can pay over $700,000 to own a condo and not be allowed to own a pet that is no possible way of damaging the unit and lives its entire life in a tank where no one can see it. Hmm. Hashtag HOA Karens. Why would you concern yourself with following an unenforceable rule? Is it unenforceable? My fiancé is worried about someone doing a random inspection for repairs and running to the board if said reptile is seen. If someone tries to inspect the interior of your home for compliance with HOA bylaws, they almost certainly will have to provide advanced notice. If not, you're going to raise too much suspicion by saying, I wasn't aware this was even allowed. I will need time to ensure this is in accordance with the declaration slash bylaws. In the meantime, I am not giving you access to my home. Just pay attention to any emails from the board and check your mail semi-regularly. The worst they can do is give you a token fine. They're not omnipotent deities of the condo building who can kick you out and seize your unit for telling them to go away one or two or five times. But seriously, I've been on my board for years and would never have allowed this except in ludicrously extreme cases where I had good reason to believe the structural integrity of the condo building itself had been compromised within that unit. I'm just curious, what kind of fine that looks like? I'm trying to figure out what the worst case scenario would be if someone complained about it. For what it's worth, pet fines are $25 a month at my HOA. On the note of the above comments, you could literally just move the tank into a closet if someone needs to come in. I did that with my snake the first time at my apartment, until one day I forgot. The manager of the complex was totally smitten, and I was basically like, do I need to pay a pet deposit? It is a pet-friendly department, but the deposit is a lot. And she just laughed at me because it's a snake. Not gonna damage anything, lol. I obviously recognize that yours is a different situation, but hopefully moving the tank could quell fears. They can't enter your unit unannounced. I'm sure some idiot didn't take proper care of their pet reptile, allowed it to roam, and caused problems for the entire HOA. 
Nine out of ten times, that's exactly how stupid rules, laws, and policies get enacted. There was the incident, and the people demanded action to ensure that it wouldn't happen again. This probably happens on a government scale as well. Agreed. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that's where it happens most. Sometimes it is beneficial, like Jessica's Law, which was made because some stupid truck diver didn't clean off the top of their car, and then the ice on it fell off and hit a car behind it and killed a teen driver. Other times, it just gives more power to the government than anything. Well, that took a turn for the worst. Boa. It's always a boa that ruins it. I was looking into getting a ball python when I moved into this unit with my fiance. Upon further reading of the pet rules from the HOA, no reptiles are allowed. Only cats, dog, fish, and bird. It's not a ball python. It's a very rare scale lungfish. Can spend its entire life out of water. Very rare. There's not even a record of them existing. Oh ho! Have you asked for an exception? I suspect they don't want someone breeding animals, but would be okay with a few pets. It's easier to default deny than improve on a case-by-case -case basis. If they say no, ask if there are any criteria they would consider for approval if you request again. If they don't provide that, then you should run for a position on the board. Use the evidence that the current board is capricious and unhelpful, and argue that the current complacent and ineffective members should be replaced. Sometimes asking for forgiveness is better. If you ask for permission, they might start snooping. If you didn't say anything, they might never have even cared to look. Probably going to get buried, but I had a very similar issue. I owned ball pythons and needed to move for work. The only apartment in the city that allowed reptiles had cars on blocks in the parking lots and busted windows. I ended up having a visit with my doctor and he legit wrote me a prescription to have my snakes as emotional support animals. I had long history of depression, and told him that the snakes gave me a goal to keep me busy, which was true. You might look into that OP, they can't legally refuse a service animal. Wow, I didn't expect someone to show up in the comments with an actual emotional support snake. Just a small correction though, ESAs are not service animals. Service animals have public access rights, and are trained to perform a task that mitigates a disability. ESAs do not have public access rights, and don't have to be trained. There are other differences, but those are the main practical ones. Posted by user OptimalPresent5, titled, Florida, HOA and Issued Emergency Vehicle, Fire. Yes, yes, I know, HOAs suck. I work for a government agency fire department, and due to the COVID situation, have been sent home with my work truck, think Chevy Trailblazer, instead of sitting in the communal office. This vehicle is clearly marked fire and has lights slash sirens installed for emergency response. Well, of course, someone in the HOA made a complaint that I have a professional or commercial vehicle in my driveway overnight. I figured with the whole COVID situation, they'd be understanding, but the fact remains that I, from time to time, will be required to have my vehicle at home to be available for emergency response. The vehicle does not reasonably fit in the garage, though I'd like to know what people consider reasonable. The HOA document states, Vehicles used by residents or occupants for their own personal use, not for commercial or professional use, can be parked in the driveway. No vehicles which advertise or reference a business or professional service, unless they are working, can be parked in the driveway at any time. I am familiar with the new law in Florida, SB 476, specifically stating that HOAs cannot ban police vehicles in the driveway. I am also familiar with the AGO 2005-36, which also points to 320.01.25 FS, that states a vehicle owned or operated by the government is not considered a commercial motor vehicle. Do I have a leg to stand on to fight this? It seems to me that I could argue that my vehicle is not a commercial or professional vehicle, and as such isn't prohibited. It could mean that I have to leave my job if I cannot perform my on-call duties properly, and would definitely impact my response time if I don't have the vehicle. I would take this angle. As a member of the fire department, you're basically always working due to being on call and could be paged at any time, day or night. Therefore, you are not violating the HOA rules by having a fire vehicle. Of course, there's also the Florida laws on your side. 
If they continue pressing the issue, I'd speak to someone at your station to see if they know of someone who can knock some sense into the HOA. Could also argue that a fire truck is a public service and not a professional service. I searched the Florida statutes and found the only reference to professional service didn't include emergency response. It did include things like doctors, lawyers, accountants, and such, which would probably constitute a decent number of their neighbors. I considered asking them for definitions of the two terms as they're not defined anywhere, and it could easily be argued that any vehicle that you use for work, even if just driving to work, could be a professional vehicle. I would not ask them for clarification. That's basically asking them to write language into the HOA rules that excludes your vehicle. So technically, you are parking a fire truck in front of your house. I would tell them that they are interfering with your official duties. Technically, this is correct as you have the vehicle for official reasons. Was HOA actually dumb enough to send you a violation notice? Your argument that the truck is an emergency department's vehicle and does not reference or advertise any business or professional service. Unless 911 is a professional service all of a sudden. No, they didn't send me a notice yet. They did, however, give me a courtesy call. I considered waiting for the letter, but wanted to get ahead of it. I suspect that if they send me a letter, that I could take that to work and let the boss decide how to handle it. If they proceed, they might encounter a very, very picky fire inspector, or inspectors, on the HOA board's units. Definitely talk to your supervisor and find out who to file a complaint with. I'm sure that the real authorities would love to put these HOA morons in their place. What they're asking is incredibly selfish and puts lives at risk. It's hard for me to imagine any court supporting the HOA's decision. The HOA absolutely does not have the power to screw with the fire department's emergency response time, regardless of what some busybody with too much free time thinks. Flip it around on them. Our HOA attempted to put similar language in our bylaws until I pointed out the flaws. Have you ever seen a vehicle with Chevrolet, Ford, Honda, Toyota, etc. on the back? Guess what? That is an advertisement for a business. The name of the car dealer on a sticker, plaque, or license plate frame, advertisement for a business. Do you have a bumper or window sticker advertising a vacation destination, your favorite band, or private school their child attends? Another advertisement. Point out the absurdity of their rules by walking around the neighborhood and pointing out violations of the neighbors with the above rules. Bonus points if it is the board of directors. Then counter the violation by indicating that the fire vehicle does not advertise or reference businesses or professional service. That's an interesting approach. There are certainly violations by members of the HOA and even the same paragraph by a board member. Just didn't want to rock too many boats at the moment, other reasons at play with that individual. My intent was to take photos of their vehicles showing advertising to point out the problem with the rule as worded. If they are going to enforce the rule, they need to enforce it equally. The intent of the rule is to disallow work vans, wrapped with the company logos and graphics, but their description of the violation is flawed. Alright, alright, I hope you hooligans enjoyed this HOA shenanigans, uh, what well, we're complaining about them today, grrr, I hate you HOA. Um, I'm gonna throw you guys to Outro Marky. It's okay, I'm not gonna actually throw you. That would be against the HOA's bylaws and CC and R's, and I might get a fine if I do that, so I'm gonna be careful. G'day there, guys. Outro Marky here. Hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed making it today. Uh, if you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you thought about it down below. Also, if you like memes, be sure to head on over to my second channel, Marky2. It should be one of the sexy Australian faces on screen, the one without the flag. It's my latest and greatest creation, and I hope you like it. Also, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my channel members and Patreon subscribers. You guys do so much good for me, and the support goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I love you guys, and I appreciate all the help and support you provide me on this channel. Also, if you want to join the family, links are down in the description below, or click that join button next to the subscribe button. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that one today, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!